Hey everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial and in this session we will look into how to integrate Google Pay and Apple Pay payment systems in your Flutter app. And to make this possible, we will be making use of one such package available in pub.dev. And what we have here is a running emulator of both Android and iOS devices. Here in the Android device, we have the Google Pay button placed right at the center and which when click, it requires an active Google account to be signed in in this device. Right now, we don't have any active Google account being signed in. If you have an active account, then you will be able to move along with the further steps of payments. And similarly here in the iOS device, we have the Apple Pay button being placed right at the center. And which when click, we get the bottom seat. And here at the very first, we have the card being displayed. And if you click, we have option to choose from. And below which we have option to add the billing address that requires few inputs from the user side like the name, address, city, state, etc. And after the card, we have the total amount being displayed in terms of US dollars. And if we click that, we have the item A and item B each cost around 0.01 dollars and the total counts to 0.02 dollars. And finally, here if we have provided the billing address, then you will be able to proceed with the payments by entering the passcode. So this is typically how the payment system works. And in this video, we will look into how to integrate these kinds of Google Pay and Apple Pay buttons in your Flutter app and make the payments really simple. And this is going to the package that will pretty much help in integrating Google Pay and Apple Pay payment systems in our Flutter app. And always check for the latest version. And as for the video recording date, 1.1.0 is going to be the latest version. And it supports both Android and iOS devices and the package is null safe. And if you scroll down here for integrating in the Apple Pay, you need a merchant account. You can just follow the links and create a merchant account only then you will be able to make real payments and you will be provided the merchant ID as well. That needs to be integrated in the coding side. Similarly for the Google Pay, you need to sign up to the business console and create an account over there. And to complete the integration process, we need to provide the configurations and you can head over to this link. Here they have provided with the sample configurations where we have the default Apple Pay configurations being displayed. You can just copy this and paste it in a separate dart file. Now let's move on to the coding site and start with the integration process. First we need to add the package which is pay. So let's head over to Perspect and try to add this package. And after adding this package, let's move on to the main dart file. Here in the main dot file, we have a navigation to home page. The home page is nothing but a stateful widget class. So now let's try to define the Apple Pay and Google Pay buttons. For that, first try to import the necessary packages. After adding the import statement, and first is we'll try to get the platform operating system just in case to distinguish both Google Pay and Apple Pay button for Android and iOS devices respectively. Let's create a separate variable that holds the Apple Pay and Google Pay buttons. First starting with the Apple Pay, we need to make use of the payment configuration and you can also see that we have a separate dart file called payment underscore config dot dart. You have the entire set of configuration being specified over here for both Apple Pay as well as for Google Pay. So this value we get from the package documentation itself which we already discussed. So it's pretty much it. Following with the payment configuration, we need to add the payment items. So these are going to be the items. It can be a list of items. First is going to be item A and the amount is going to be 0 0.01. Similarly, we have another item which is item B with the same amount. And the third item on the list is going to be the total item that is the label is going to be total and the total amount is going to be 0 0.02 which is the sum of the item A and item B. Finally we try to have some styling for our uh, Apple Pay button you can specify the width, height etc and the type is going to be by followed by which you can add another stylings to provide margin and we have a callback function on payment result right now we are not going to deal with that so let's try to print the empty result statement here in case of loading we try to create a circular progress indicator over there. So this is pretty much what we need to have for the Apple Pay button. Here let's head over to the Google Pay button and try to add the configuration just the same way what we have done for Apple Pay. We need to make use of the payment configuration followed by the con payment configuration just the same way we need to add the payment items. Here let's have the only one item in the list which is the total and you can specify the width type etc. The same callback function on payment result. Finally the loading indicator. Now we have the Google Pay and Apple Pay button being specified. So let's head over to scaffold. Here in the scaffold let's have a body that is going to have the child with a few spacing and at the center we try to display the buttons. And based upon the platform if it is going to be iOS platform we try to display the Apple Pay button or else we try to display the Google Pay button. Okay. So let's refresh this, you will be able to see the Apple Pay button. Since the emulator is going to be the iOS emulator, we get the Apple Pay button being displayed in the UI screen. And upon clicking this, we get the same kind of bottom sheet and the card, what we see here are actually something which we have already defined in the payment configuration. 
and if you head over to the apple pay button here in the payment configuration we have the default apple pay and this is going to hold pretty much all the details what needs to be displayed here in the ui screens and here we have the kinds of card that needs to be displayed and we get the same kind of cards being displayed in the ui screen as well similarly here we have the amount in terms of us dollars if you want to change it you can just alter this currency code here and if you restart the application you now see that we get the Indian rupee being displayed in and this item A and item B are something what we have already defined here in the payment item list. So the first is going to be labeled as item A with the amount as 0 0.01. Similarly, the second is labeled as item B with the amount as the 0 0.01. The final amount is going to be labeled as total and it is going to be the sum of first two items. All right. In case if you want to make real payments, here you need to provide with your correct merchant identifier which you will get only after creating a merchant account in the Apple console. Only then you will be able to make real time payments with the help of this package. Okay. So this is basically how you will be able to integrate both Apple Pay and Google Pay buttons in your Flutter app and make the payments really simple. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you do so, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.